So, we are in our last panel. I am so happy to have here Magdalena Vrubel. Magda is a Vice President and Senior Payment Product Lead for BMO. In her current role, Magdalena leads a cross-border team of product managers in the US and Canada. She's a big promoter of building strong interpers interpersonal relationships and focuses on employee empowerment and engagement. Welcome her. We also have uh, Agnieszka Bastrzyk. Uh, Agnieszka Bastrzyk joined the Polish Roman Catholic Union of America in 2008. Moving through the organization, she was most recently the director of marketing for over seven years. And as of August 2018, she was elected to be, to be the secretary treasurer. Agnieszka brings a lot of experience and enthusiasm to her role. Welcome, ladies, and thank you for accepting the invitation to be in this panel. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you. So, both of you represent a new generation of leaders. What does modern leadership mean to you? So, I, I can take that one. Um, thanks so much for having me back. I'm super thrilled to be here again. Um, some of you may know me with a different financial institution from last year. So, <laughs> for those that have the question earlier, I did um, make a switch to a global brand of a bank and I'm in a different capacity. Um, so, modern leadership, um, probably what got me to my current role is um, tying back to Amy's coaching is the mindset, right? We want to grow, we want to evolve. And I felt like I have outgrown my previous role. Um, it was a much smaller institution. Um, I did really well, but I wanted the challenge. Um, so when we last met at that capacity, I was not managing um, a team per se. So now I am back on the technology side and I am managing a cross-border team. So it's a team based in Canada as well as a team in US. So I have to be very, very creative, um, utilize various resources to make sure that not only am I connecting them to them remotely, because I don't see some of uh, my team members on a daily basis, to make sure that we stay in front of each other, that I'm able to connect with them and build those relationships and partnerships, and also that I'm able to um, learn from them and their differences, because a lot of them have very different backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, right? So I have Anywhere from, you know, your kind of the, the typical American base to Middle Eastern, Asian, obviously I'm Polish. Um, you know, there's a, a very diverse team, which I absolutely love. Um, but I also have to make sure that I come prepared and that I can have a very specific connection to each one of them so that we trust each other, establish that report, and then we can together grow and be successful. I would, I would say many of these things. So modern leadership to me, with, with times changing as they are, I feel that the modern leader must be really conscious, uh, really consciously making choices, uh, much of what uh, Magda is saying, to connect with the team. Because again, there is no I in team, and only when we recognize that can we really empower ourselves as well as our team, and that's really what I feel that modern leadership is, is key in. Um, additionally, now that the world is also evolving, and, and even though you know we, we work and we live in a certain area, so much of our work does impact um, you know, entire regions, even internationally. So with modern leadership, there's also, I feel, an aspect of strategic planning in that, in that way. So for a shorter term and also longer term. And really making that realization and, and consciously making such efforts to plan strategically for those short and long term uh, goals, I feel, is very important. So thinking outside of the box, being mindful, the mindset again, uh, very, very important, I feel, in modern, le modern leadership. So if I may add one component, because you just made me think of something, the whole strategy and planning is very critical, not only for the role that you're in and your division and to be successful, but for talent retention. I think what the new, I would say, spin on the world that we live, live in is that 
one, unemployment rates are very low, so that means that it's much harder to source talent that's loyal, that's encouraged, empowered, and motivated, and actually wants to be on your team, right? So as much as, as a hiring manager, I'm looking and trying to build my team, that person sitting across from me is also evaluating me my style, my culture, the company, and what we stand for. And just as much as I make an offer to them, they could also cross me off the list, right? So we have to be very strategic in the way we treat our employees and how we set them up for success to ensure that they are staying with us through all the good things, right? When things are happening and performing in the economy, obviously payouts are different. There's different bonus structures, but there's downturns. And, and you know, in the financial space, we are obviously you know, forecasting and getting ready for maybe a not so hot, you know, <laughs> season approaching. But, um, you know, we have to really find the value in our employees and we have to make sure that they have a career path and a trajectory and that we're also helping them meet their goals. And if I may just chime in on that, because you <laughs> made course. me think of this, so much of that, would you say, is risk-taking, right? So Absolutely. much of that is because, and we have to be prepared for that, right? And, and that is a conversation that um, we have to have with ourselves as well, right? And so that really is another component, I feel, of, of modern leadership because you have to know that there will be uh, these risks and nothing will be perfect, just as, as one of our uh, audience members did say before. And in your inner voice, right? That's that inner voice too. As a leader, you have an inner voice. So not only are you personally challenged with your own expectations and you know judgments, etc. Well, now you're responsible for not only the performance of employees looking up to you that you're leading through this, but also the goals of your company. So it no longer becomes okay. You know, I'm a leader. You do this. You're great at doing your job. Now you're a manager. No, you actually need to know how to connect with people. And from a budget perspective, there's a a whole new spin of allocating funds to actually care for your employees, to maintain and sustain the culture that is inviting. So, I mean, there's a whole new dimension of actually leading and managing versus just, okay, they show up, yes, I've got people, I've got humans in the seat. No, I mean, we're on their terms these days, right? So we want to be mindful of families, of the balance, of whatever goals and aspirations they have, because we know they're, how pivotal their work is to the success of everything that, that we do. And so much of that is constant, constant, and all I'm, the time. And I'm glad that you've mentioned about employees, because it's really important, and it's a huge part of component of modern leadership. How can someone learn leadership principles, even if someone is not in a leadership position? Sure, I could, I could go first. So um, I will piggyback on Amy's panel just a little while ago. Um, as she stated, you are here and you're good enough. So to piggyback off on that, um, even though you may not be in a, leader, in a leadership position, you know, every one of us has leadership qualities. So basically, to kind of utilize that previous panel, so much of it is really actually consciously, positively affirming what we feel, what we know, and this has to do with knowing our own self, knowing our strengths, our weaknesses, you know, what possible threats could, could be to our success, and also uh, observing those, those possible opportunities and how we can capitalize on that. So really knowing yourself, you're able to attain these qualities. And, and once you know those qualities, of course, what you need to do is communicate that. And how do you do that? Well, obviously, it's very difficult to pat yourself on the back on a daily basis, but you almost have to, um, not only for yourself, but for your career. So obviously, there are ways to do that that um, you know, don't make you look like somebody with a big ego, uh, but really just understanding that you do have so much to offer and, and sharing that, you know, with, within weekly meetings or with meetings with your, you know, superior, your team leader, uh, within your team, uh, just so that not only do you hear it out loud, but they understand it as well. And so um, these, these leadership qualities have to come from this space where you do understand that you have so much to offer, and once you know what your strengths are, you're able to capitalize on that, but you can address your weaknesses as well, and you have to practice that. This is like an ongoing uh, process, I feel. 
100% agree. And one thing that we all need to consider is when we look up to leaders, whether it's you know like your favorite um, CEO of some company that you like to do business with, or whether they're political leaders or religious leaders or just people in your home, um, leaders never stop to learn. They are the first ones to admit their shortcomings, and they're the first ones to actually learn from their mistakes. So I think when you're talking about qualities, you really have to be vulnerable within yourself to know where you need the growth, where you need the development. My like favorite trend word, which I'm kind of upset it's not on like Google trend words, but it's being intentional, right? So wake up every day with a specific thing that you want to accomplish. So being intentional in how you think, backing up, you know, Amy's component, that's your mindset. But, you know, my, we manage our business um, with different time zones, right? So being mindful of other people's schedule and not scheduling meetings over lunch just because, you know, it's convenient for you. But you know what? People deserve a break and step away. So just being mindful of simple things. But on, on another note, we all have 24 hours in a day. That is it how we spend our time and how we go about planning our day, again, if you use that with intention and you set time aside to get through your email and then you don't let that bother you with every pop-up throughout the day, then you focus on your, you know, whatever project or task or meeting, whether it's your time with the family. I loved um, the previous comment from Lori, be present, right? So when we're intentional, then we are present. We're actually giving back. So I think when you're considering a leader, all of us lead something, we lead ourselves, is just really be intentional with your purpose, what you want out of it, what you hope to deliver to others. And then as you cultivate that, you do build the confidence, you build the respect within your you know, communities and people around you and immediately rise above it. But we all have the same chance and the same amount of time to do it in. It's just our approach how we go about getting there. So what or who inspires you? My mommy, mama. <laughs> My mommy too. <laughs> Great. So, yeah, you know, um, I think just kind of evolving and, you know, some of you know some of my background from last year, but I moved here to the U.S. when I was 11. Um, you know, my mom's always held a career and she's always showed me there was no difference in our household who was the mom who was the dad there were no roles right mom cooks cleans or whatever no mom also worked so my dad cooked maybe didn't taste as great as my mom or maybe he was more creative <laughs> but they each helped each other out so we grew up thinking that everybody's entitled to whatever they want to do. So I felt like that gave me a huge leg up over maybe somebody growing up in a more stereotypical household. Um, but from, you know, kind of like the public eye, I'm, I'm not sure whether anybody else kind of knows, but Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, um, he's somebody that's vocal. I mean, he maybe uses profanity a little bit more um, to my liking, but he sends a very direct, transparent message, and that is just get up of your butt and do things. Stop comparing yourself to others. Stop wishing something was different. <laughs> Be the change you want to see. I mean, it's simple as that. I mean, he's pretty funny. So that is somebody I do have in a, a social media feed. I don't actively follow or listen to every video, but the messages are literally like, you know, a sentence, but it just kind of gets you going for the day. Um, you know, I could probably go on and on and on, but you know, pick somebody that relates to the type of lifestyle that you want to live or that you're living so that it's almost like this help, daily affirmation of like, okay, I see it, I'm, I'm ready to go, it's in my mind, and kind of hopefully trumps over the 80 or 60,000 negative minds that the study <laughs> suggested. So inspiration, um, to me, I mean, that's a very broad topic because, you know, there are many levels of inspiration from, you know, very core things, you know, people draw inspiration, I draw inspiration from faith, from family, you know, I have a very supportive husband, uh, three beautiful children, you know, without my family, certainly um, I would be nothing without my parents' sacrifices, etc. So all of this draws, you know, a background for me. Um, so on a daily basis, you know, really, 
you can find inspiration in so many things. And, and a lot of that also should be, you know, conscious choices where you can draw this inspiration from because not only do we have this 80%, you know, negative thoughts, but as was said also, um, you know, in the news, so much of what you hear, you know, is obviously also, there's more negative than positive. And so um, personally, you know, if, within professional life, you know, I certainly read. I, I read a lot. Um, I'm definitely big on learning. I love learning. Um, so, so I draw lots of inspiration from, from, from reading, you know, all kinds of things, you know, obviously industry specific, but also, um, you know, again, all kinds of different, different things. And so you really get a flavor of that diversity because in the world that we live in, you know, we have immediate access to information. You're able to view uh, inspirational YouTube videos from, you know, TED Talks. You're able to um, read, you know, you can hear books as you're driving, you know, our commutes are super long these days, why not capitalize on that low time? And, and that's what I try to do because, you know, time is of the essence and, and um, that's, that's what I would say on that subject. So what are the three qualities um, that help to achieve success? So for me, communication is key. Um, I majored in communication thinking I was going to work in PR, so kudos to you, Magda, my namesake. Um, I think that is just number one important. Without communication, you cannot build a relationship, you cannot sustain a relationship. Um, and communication is both, the talking and the active listening, right? So. Um, I think that is foundation for everything I use. I do talk a lot, I do listen, I actually do take a pause when I have my one-on-one -on -one with my team, and I do travel out to see them probably like every four to six weeks. Uh, it's their time, right? When I schedule time, it's their time. I interject when I'm asked to speak, but it's their time and I respond to their needs. Um, I also think trust is huge, because again, without trust, you're not gonna be able to take a leap of faith. You will not be able to take risks. So I think a lot just comes from the fact that you're in a safe zone and feel comfortable that the other person is not judging you but allowing you the ability to speak your mind and that's where creativity happens. So kind of spinning into the innovation creativity, um, I think one of the reasons that I have been successful in the financial industry is I don't think like a banker. I never wanted to work for a bank. I hate math, I love money. Um, but it's just, I've never ever considered any job in finance, um, which is why I've, I think, succeeded in the positions that I'm in because they are technology positions and there's a lot of risk averse people in a bank, right? So they almost thrive on the fact that somebody's willing to put their name on the line and say, yes, we should invest in this and buy this and do this, our clients will love it. Um, but you know, I think those are the qualities that would get you through you know, a long um, runway, and you have to be able to keep an open mind as you evolve, and there's different things happening in the political space, in your personal space. Um, so just making um, a conscious choice that you're going to change and evolve with the, your situations. If I were to choose uh, three qualities that really um, I feel uh, helped me succeed or get me where I am today. I would say that probably number one, again, my thirst for, uh, for knowledge. So um, there is, you know, without a doubt, I, I like to be involved um, and I like to learn about these, these things that I'm involved in. So certainly before I start um, any involvement, I like to learn about whether it's the position, again, the industry, um, whether it's my work with the Chamber of Commerce, the Polish-American Chamber of Commerce, or uh, these various other things that I am involved with. Um, it's certainly something that I think that uh, is, is, is a great quality to have well, you have to also, I mean, something you can attain as well because it is just a conscious effort, but I certainly um, love to learn. So that would be one of my uh, qualities that I would say. Uh, secondly, I would say that I'm a pretty strong-willed person. So uh, once I kind of set my mind to something, you know, whether it is uh, personal or professional, um, I certainly 
do everything in my power to, to get myself there or get my team there or, um, you know, whatever it may be. So um, I think that is certainly another uh, of these traits. And if I were to choose a third trait, I would say that I am uh, pretty organized and goal-oriented. So uh, I do, it's something I've attained. So certainly that was not the case maybe of several years ago, but I've learned that that is one of the most important things, uh, for me anyway, that I've noticed, um, setting goals. So again, whether they be short-term goals or long-term goals, really both sets of goals, it's important to uh, recognize what those are, whether it is, again, you personally um, trying to grow your career, uh, or whether it is for your organization, your company, whatever cause you work for, it is important to set these goals, keep them in mind, and work toward them. And again, this is where you, again, have these conversations, not only with, with your team, but with yourself. What is it that we are lacking? What is it that we can work on to get us there? And it kind of keeps you on track. So I've certainly found that to be extremely beneficial. And I agree with you 100% that communication is a clue. And also I'll add good relationships. How do you build great relationships at work with management and with other coworkers? And how do relationships at work help you move forward and help you with your promotions? So um, relationships, relationships are key. Uh, you should have relationships with everybody, not people that you work with directly. You should always make it a point um, to get to know somebody new at your company on a daily basis. I mean, if you work <laughs> within like a five to 10 or under 10 people, hopefully you know everybody. But um, especially like in my current role, I work for a company that's global that has over 49,000 employees. So clearly um, it's almost impossible to get to know everybody. But uh, I do make a conscious effort to get up walk around, introduce myself, um, ask people what they do, what their job is, how maybe our um, functions cross together, how can we be a better team collectively. Uh, so that one um, makes me almost a safe person, right? So I've come out, not everybody has the, the traits or capabilities to kind of be the icebreaker. So now I've made them feel comfortable. They have another name that they can add to their hopefully circle of trust and not outside of the circle, but um, creating that safe zone. And the only way you can create a safe place for effective communication and trust is building those relationships. So being curious about the, the, what the person sitting across from you is interested in. Some people, it takes months to open up and share their personal story. Some people, you know, really want to keep it professional, how it's work related, but everybody has dreams and goals and aspirations and they'll share whenever. So you just have to be very mindful of those unique interactions. Um, I also treat people like people. I don't ever assign a title um, as uh, any standard of hierarchy or a, uh, a challenge or barricade that would prevent me from introducing myself or building a relationship. So when I look upwards towards my leadership, um, they're great, right? I go up, I ask them how they're doing, what's the thing that's changed since we last saw each other. I am pretty open, so I want to share about my kids, I want to share about my initiatives, my ideas. And again, I am in charge, very intentional, creating an environment where they know me. I'm not just a number or a person that got hired month X. In a company of 49,000 people, my senior leader oversees about 7,800 people. When she met me, she knew I had three kids, she knew their names, I don't thing I shared the ages. I didn't even take the job for another like four months. On my day one, she asks me specifically about the kids. She remembered their genders. She remembered my dynamic. She knew I heavily rely on family to help me with babysitting and kind of running, you know, my family operation. Um, in a shop of 7,800 people, I was impressed that she remembered after four months, right? She didn't have to be there on my day one. She happened to be visiting from Toronto and Chicago, but she made a conscious effort to walk over to my office and say, hey, I'm here, how's it going, can I help you? So I learned from that experience. So in my team of nine, right, 
there's no excuse for me not to know and remember details that my employees share with me. And you know what? We all have one note or a piece of paper and a pen. We can make a note of that. But that is how you build relationships. You're inquisitive and you mutually share and exchange experiences and try to relate to people. Yes, I, I, feel, I feel very much so as well. I agree. Um, it is so important to build trust. I mean, uh, we spend more time with our work family than we do sometimes with our own family, you know, and, and that is just everybody's struggle to, to make that, you know, work and, and compensate and, and be present in all of these, these things, but uh, that's the thing. So, you know, again, there is no I in team and, and everyone in your team needs to feel this way. And so now, uh, you know, kind of going back to these other topics that we've discussed in the modern world, you know, so much has changed in the dynamic of organizations and companies and management that it isn't, you know, just that the leadership is, you know, sitting in some high office and, no, you know, even if they're ginormous corporations or, you know, a smaller organization, um, you really have to be present and you have to uh, kind of have your door open, so to speak, you know, so that people know that they can talk to you and, and you build that, uh, build that trust because, as you stated, relationships are so important, and, and we know that. And um, how to build those relationships? Well, it's an ongoing effort. It's, it's something that there are budgets allocated to. It's something that you need to kind of watch and make sure that that culture uh, stays. You know, um, obviously things like you know not pointing out in team meetings about something not being done where you know you've not given a warning to this person. So so they feel that. Um, you're giving a conscious effort to your relationship with that specific person, with that team. Uh, it really just makes you more approachable and it really helps relationships along. So no matter if, if somebody is there for one year, two years, 10 years, 20 years, uh, you have to kind of continue this, this uh, strategy to ensure that these relationships are ongoing. So I, I'm gonna add something. Um, you mentioned uh, experience or people being on a job and, and roles for, you know, 20, 30 years. The dynamic was different, right? We have a very large um, uh, youth entering the workforce and they have different demands, they have different priorities. So um, one of the things that I just, I was raised to never be in a clique, to always have a friend everywhere, or to be a friend or a resource to somebody, right? So I've never identified with, oh, just the two people I feel comfortable, I'm just gonna talk to them. I've always would circle the room and almost find the people that were by themselves to make them feel welcome and make introductions. So one of the things that um, I have incorporated in my team is I do pair people up with seasoned employees, then transfer of knowledge and the experiences, that is something they're almost, they might not even have the, the ability to gain on the job these days because there's so many things that are documented or systemic now and they were different, they were very manual and required human intervention in the past. So um, we do promote very much kind of like a shadow, like walk a mile in someone's shoes. And I think that too allows the younger population to really learn, but also appreciate what the legacy is being left behind. And in terms of, you know, technology will fail us, right? I mean, there's outages, there's downtimes. It's, it's a robot, but there's sometimes things happen and it doesn't work. We have to have the ability to now think outside of the box. And, you know, luckily I feel like I'm in that generation where I've seen a lot of manual, I see a lot of automation, I see value in both. I, I'm comfortable in that zone. But somebody more seasoned than me is not trusting the automation and someone younger than me doesn't think, you know, there should be anything manual. There's got to be a cross of a human touch and a robot. So we really need to embrace pairing people up, learning, and actually the younger and older generations building those relationships as well. And if I could just, just, <laughs> just one small thing to add. I mean, and so much value is being put into that now, right? Because, uh, I mean, there are team building, you know, institutions and, and services that you can have that are offered to, to corporations, whether they be, you know, an escape room type team building or whatnot. And, and just, so, so it's just recognized how important that is because the more you trust your, work, your coworkers, the more you, your team gets along and the more you can accomplish just because you have that positive kind of influence. So I'm 100% sure that we can talk about 
modern leadership influence relationship at the workplace and how to promote yourself in the workplace as well for another hour or two. But unfortunately, our time is almost over. There is time for one question from the audience. So if someone would like to ask one question, it will be great. Um, this question is specifically for Agnieszka, because you said that we should be reading and always have this thirst for knowledge. So I was just wondering what kind of things you would specifically recommend that someone like me going into business should read on a daily basis? Well, I would say that that would really depend on you know, where you're heading in terms of industry. And so, you know, there's lots of, um, as I mentioned, there's lots of things that are so, you know, uh, available online that you can just find. And, and really it is industry kind of specific, but it also can, you know, um, help you with your personal items. So for example, your personal kind of uh, struggles or whether they be things you want to build on, to work on. So as I mentioned, TED Talks, for example, there are so many, are you, are you familiar? Yes. So I find those, you know, specifically as one specific example to be superbly, you know, engaging and also um, insightful. And really, you can find those on so many topics. And um, I feel, you know, from, from like personal things to more industry-wide things, um, I feel that TED Talks, as an example, would be a great place to start. Magda, thank you, Agnieszka. It was really thank great you. panel. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Time flies at this event. So thank you for being here. And if I can invite you to the group photo, that will be great, all of you. And uh, we can network more um, at the foyer.